Fly away to fire meat, hear meat. Yo, slap subscribe if you're new here. We're Meat Boy MMA, and if you've been with the Meat Boys for a while, you know who you are. We appreciate you grilling and chilling always, and it's good to be back, right? Two weeks off, another straight three weeks with some great UFC action, and in this one, kicking things off, Tracy Cortez, 10-1 and overall, 5-0 uh, and in the UFC, and currently a slight dog, plus 100. It's The odds are kind of flipping a little bit. It's basically a pick em versus He Boss, who at minus 120, she was at one point all the rage, right? Perhaps like the hype has simmered a little bit, but she's still a respectable 11 and three overall, five and two in the UFC. And this is a woman who had won four straight. She was doing media spots with Dana White. Uh, she got wins over Mac uh, Mackenzie Dern, Paige Van Zant, and then ultimately she got absolutely slept by Marina Rodriguez. And we were kind of all over that one. We had Marina as a dog and obviously she cashed and it was a tough loss, but it was good to see her rebound with that win over Verna Jindy Hoba. And she looked good in that fight. She pretty much dominated Jindy Hoba and then went up to 125, where she lost this close split decision to Caitlin Chu Kagan. And we kind of wondered how she was going to look back up at 125. She did fight at 125 early in her UFC career, but it was a late notice, kind of a strange circumstance situation as opposed to her willingly going up. And we were curious to see how she fared against Chu Kagan, who is essentially always the number one contender, right? She's a massive flyweight for the division, and she did hold her own. She lost the fight split decision, but uh, it seemed like she belonged at 25, I thought at least. And I'm curious to see what she looks like against Tracy Cortez, because... They're going to be in, you know, sim more similar in size. I mean, uh, Cortez is only two inches. Uh, Rebus is two inches taller than Cortez, and there's a one-inch reach disadvantage. But we know Tracy Cortez as someone who is trying to take you down, trying to keep you there. She's got great wrestling, gnarly top pressure, and he is someone who's no slouch on the ground either. So I'm interested to get your thoughts on this one because both these women had a lot of hype, right? It almost feels like this is the UFC kind of jumping ship on the Reboss uh, hype train and is ready to unload all the hype and star power onto Tracy Cortez so she can run with it and take what he Boss had, basically. So what are your thoughts on this one? Are you taking Amanda he Boss or are you rolling with Tracy T-City Cortez? Yeah, this is such a great matchup. This is truly the battle of the waifus. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see if this even hits the ground because, let's be honest, Amanda Hivas is no jokes when it comes to you know jiu-jitsu and Tracy Cortez is no joke when it comes to wrestling. But can Tracy stop her jiu-jitsu you know, submission attempts? And can Amanda stuff those takedowns or throw in submissions? I don't know, but I'm excited to see. If somehow they are both aware of the skill and they respect it, this could be a stand-up fight for three rounds. Now, then it goes to who's got the better hands. It could be Amanda Hivas, could be Tracy Cortez. I don't know. They're both kind of mid when it comes to the strike game, but their, their bread and butter really is that ground. I would say Hivas maybe has a better striking, but she is in a bigger division now at 115. I would say maybe she would take this, but I got to go with Tracy because she's a more natural 125-er. She's you know, two inches taller, she's going to have the reach advantage, the height advantage, and the strength advantage. So I think this is going to be a lock, in my opinion, for Tracy. Surprised to see that she came out as a dog. Now they're a pick of minus 110, uh, last I checked. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. But I think Tracy gets it done. Yeah, I could see it for sure. And I, too, was also surprised with the odds. I thought that maybe Cortez would be like a minus 150, maybe like a two to one favorite against uh, Amanda Hebos. But it seems like a lot of people are still bullish on Hebos and Vegas included. And if we look over at Tapology, right, 48%. So there's a lot of people rolling with Hebos. They think they'll get that she will get this one done. Some copper, maybe a little bit KO for her. And then basically of the 52% for Cortez, it's all for that beige decision. So do you think that this fight, uh, regardless of the winner, most likely goes the distance? And if this fight does stay on the feet, like you kind of hinted at, who do you see having the advantage there? Yeah, I think it's going to be either a submission or it goes the distance. Um, and uh, I, I think Tracy's going to have the advantage everywhere, to be honest. I mean, her dude is T-City. If she gets subbed, that's just embarrassing for T-City, and he should stop being her coach. Um, he, there's no way she should get subbed, so I think this truly is a lock, and Tracy should have the stand-up, uh, you know, she should have the stand-up striking better. Um, she's the bigger girl. She should be way faster, stronger, etc. So I, I really see this only going Tracy. 
unless I'm just misreading and Amanda Hebos's strikings like next level, I just don't see it. The fact that she had a close, you know, split versus you know Chikajian, which no shame in that. She is very good. She beats basically everyone except for a few. Um, but I don't know. I think Tracy might be the real deal, and she's just kind of working up that ladder. So this is another levels test. It's gonna be interesting, but I'm gonna ride with Tracy just because she's a slight dog. Yeah, I feel that for sure. I feel like it's pretty juicy value. I mean, even if she closes at like a slight favorite, I feel like there's still even some decent value there as well. And I didn't know what to expect with Tracy Cortez. Like it's, uh, I thought in her last performance against Melissa Gatto, where a lot of people thought Gatto, myself included, thought Gatto was going to get that one done. And Cortez just smoked her. I mean, Gatto came in there with an awful game plan and maybe had she fought a little bit smarter, could have made it more interesting. But Cortez did look good. She uh, did what she wanted to against a pretty tough fighter in Melissa Gatto. So, and, and again, we can't even neglect the fact that this is also a woman who beat Aaron Blanchfield, right? It was over in Invicta pre-UFC, but Aaron Blanchfield is one of the, the women in the UFC right now who is uh, similar to these fighters that we're talking about now, filled with a lot of hype. A lot of people think Blanchfield might be a future champ here in the upcoming years, and Cortez has a win over her too. So I'm with you. I think that Tracy gets this one done over Amanda Hebos. Maybe we're misreading it. Maybe we're not recognizing the stand-up chops that Hebos has and perhaps the takedown defense because I do think that Cortez is going to try to get this one to the mat. And I like her. Uh, I just see her as a fighter who, if she's on top, she's going to have the uh, advantage over most women on the ground. And I don't know if Hebos is going to have the scrambling ability to be able to escape that just like what seemingly is heavy top pressure from Cortez. So I'm going to go to Cortez. I think she grinds out a decision similar to how she did against Gato, but if she can sneak a finish, you're probably going to get some super juicy numbers for either the KO or sub, but I'm kind of with Tapology in that I do see this fight go in the distance, and I have to be rolling with uh, T-City Cortez just like you. So, any last thoughts? No, great fight. Throw in the comments who you got, which waifu are you picking, and why. Smash like, subscribe, check out the other videos.